This is the London Underground Mosquito. Hank, Marvin. Pleasure to meet you. To come across this buzzing little bloke in person, you'll need to travel to London and specifically head down into the subway. Chocker down here, isn't it? Because among 3,000 species of mosquitoes in the world, you'll only find this guy in the London subway. Not buzzing above ground near the stations, but down in the system. This mosquito is one of those rare cases when a unique species evolves in one particular place. They built the system back in the 1860s. It's the oldest subway in the world, mind you. And any mosquitoes that happened to be down there got shut off from the rest of the world. Save for the entrances and exits at stations, the subway system is a pretty sealed environment. The mosquitoes got trapped and evolved right there. And if you're annoyed by all mosquitoes in general, get this, the London underground species is even bitier than others. While above ground mosquitoes mostly feed on birds and grab a bite from you when given the rare chance, this one really likes to go for people. That's because it may do with the meals available to it. Not birds, but mammals. That is, rats and humans. It's also unique in that it doesn't need blood to lay eggs like other mosquitoes and doesn't hibernate in the winter. So expect to swat at them year round. Also a result of their being secluded to this underground tunnel system. No obvious seasonal temperature changes down there. This London type is so unique that it can't even crossbreed with other mosquito species. But beware, this species could be on the move. Infestations of particularly bitey mosquito populations have popped up in subway systems and sewers around the world, from Melbourne to New York. So let's head across the pond and meet another bug that lives only in the big city. Of over one billion ants running through the streets of Manhattan, Scientists spotted a unique reddish-brown variety. That's about 120 ants for every person living in New York. These insects don't fit into any of the 13,000 ant species known to science. They're unique and only live in Manhattan between 63rd and 76th streets. Scientists don't know how long these so-called Manhattans have evolved in isolation. They arrived in the U.S. on ships from Europe and were cut off from the rest of the city's infrastructure. One thing's for sure, the species thrives on fast food, especially corn syrup. Because of its carbon-rich diet, the Manhattan was able to perfectly adapt to the dry, warm weather of the concrete jungle. Both ants and mosquitoes lived with dinosaurs. But don't get too excited about cloning a T-Rex by taking blood from a fossilized mosquito. We'll leave that myth to Hollywood plots. DNA is an incredibly fragile molecule. It breaks down quickly. So you'll need a mostly fresh sample from a recently departed dino. Chances are, we can't bring the dinosaurs back. But no need to. Dinosaurs live among us today. Everybody thinks an asteroid wiped out all the dinos 65 million years ago, but it didn't. Some survived and evolved into creatures you see every single day. Birds. In fact, the closest living relative to the mighty T-Rex is the chicken. Tarantulas in the wild keep tiny frogs as pets. Well, they don't feed them or take them for walks, but they do let the little froggies hang around with them. It's a win-win relationship. The frog gets a big hairy bodyguard from things that want to eat it, and the tarantula gets a protector for its nest. These tiny frogs feed on ants that try to eat the spider's eggs. There's no distinct border where our atmosphere ends and space begins. As you go up and further from the surface, the air gets thinner and thinner. At some point, it loses enough density that airplane wings stop working. That's about 60 miles up and where scientists decided space officially starts. Yes, the cosmos is just an hour's drive away. The photoreceptors in your eyes are so sensitive, they can project an image when it's not even there. Ever stared at a bright light, moved your eyes to something else in the room, and you can still see the shape of that light bulb floating before your eyes? That's your eyes continuing to send visual information to your brain. A healthy human eye can see a candlelight up to 30 miles away. The Mariana Trench 
the deepest known place on this planet that could fit Mount Everest with room to spare, goes only six miles down. The leaf slug eats so much algae, their body absorbs a part of the plant cells, chloroplasts, that let these little guys actually photosynthesize. Basically, this sea slug is part animal and part plant. When you dream, the props come from those older parts of the human mind that refer more to genetic memory than to your own personal ones. Smartphones and cars came into our lives in relatively recent times, and our cave people brains haven't gotten used to them enough. That's why you hardly ever see tech in your dreams. Okay, say you're one of the lucky few who's used a phone in their dream. Did you struggle to read or write a text? It's because the two regions of your brain that help you interpret language are mostly inactive when you're asleep. It's a good trick to know you're in a dream. You won't be able to read words or tell the time on a clock. Imagine if we could record a black hole on video. Watch it pull in and consume any matter that gets too close, even light itself. Oh, spaghettification. Now take this recording and play it backwards. This is what a theoretical white hole should be. The black hole's pushing away and matter spewing counterpart. If you've seen videos of whales surfacing, you'll notice they spray water from their blowholes. Only they don't. Whales are mammals like you and me. They breathe air. That's why they come to the surface. They release old air they've been holding in their lungs and take in new fresh air. That warm air coming from the blowhole meets with cold air around it and forms water droplets, giving the illusion that blowholes are like fountains. Get equipped for any season with brand new Brightside merch. Click the link and grab your print. You can tell a whale's type by looking at its blowhole. If it has two nostril-looking holes, it's a baleen whale, the kind with teeth that look more like toothbrush bristles. One blowhole means it's a toothed whale, which includes dolphins and orcas. The mighty megalodon was over half the length of a blue whale, the largest creature that's ever lived in all of Earth's history. Scientists did a computer calculation of a meg's bite force and came up with something like 18 tons per square inch. That's over 10 times stronger than a great white shark's and enough to crush whale bones like a grape. Thanks to cell regeneration, you replace your skin entirely every month, your blood every four months, your liver 500 days, and you make yourself a whole new skeleton every 10 years. <sighs> Scientists think we yawn to get more oxygen to the brain. When you get bored or tired, you don't breathe as deeply and it starves the brain a little. The lungs expanding and stretching the surrounding muscles also helps wake the body up. Cicadas are totally unique on this planet in that they have no natural enemies. Since they come out of their underground shelters every 13 or 17 years, no other animal can depend on them as a food source. Scientists believe that early humans lost their fur so they wouldn't overheat while hunting. We instead evolved to store fat to keep warm which is why your head is covered in long, thick hair. There's no fat on your scalp. A teaspoon of neutron star material weighs 10 million tons. That'd be like squishing millions of Earths into a ball the size of Manhattan. If you could stand on the surface of a neutron star, your body would be instantly squished down and spread into a layer one atom thick. Yep, you'd be two-dimensional, just like a cartoon. Get this. A million seconds is about 11 days. One billion seconds is 30 years. A billion steps would take you 15 times around the Earth's equator. And if you started counting from one to one billion right now, it would take you 95 years to finish. Okay, let's get started. One, two. One dog year equals seven human years. That's an oversimplified and widespread myth. Aging in dogs and cats can depend on the breed, size, and their age. For example, one year for most dogs equals about 15 human years. That jumps to 24 at age two and slows down to around four more human years with each birthday. It then speeds up yet again after their first six years, especially for larger breeds. Most animals have tails, so 
Why don't humans? It's because we started walking on two legs. Tails help with balance, but when your body mass is upright with that 10-pound head sitting on top, you don't need another appendage at the other end to balance it all out. If you're ever on a plane and the landing feels like it was accidentally rough, it was probably done on purpose. A plane's wings produce more lift when they're closer to the ground, pushing it back up into the air. The best way to prevent this is with a firm landing that puts the wheels on the runway as soon as possible. Harder landings also give the wheels more traction on rainy or snowy runways. If your second toe is longer than the big one, you're pretty special. Only one in 10 people have this so-called Morton's toe. In ancient Greece, a foot with Morton's toe was considered a sign of beauty. By the way, the Statue of Liberty has it too. Contrary to popular belief, the tongue is not the strongest muscle in your body. That would be your jaw muscle. Plus, the tongue isn't technically a muscle, it's eight of them woven together. Structurally, it's very similar to an octopus arm. Nope, that wasn't a slip. An octopus does have arms, not tentacles. And they only have six arms. The other two are legs. Arms have suction cups all the way down their length. Tentacles only have suction cups at the end. And that's what squids have two of. If you could open your head and poke your brain, you wouldn't feel anything. It might be the powerhouse of the nervous system, but it doesn't contain any sensory receptors for contact stimuli, aka it doesn't feel pokes and prods. Horse hooves and rhino horns are made of the same stuff as your hair and nails, keratin. Rhino horns curve back because the keratin in the front grows faster than in the back. One of the oldest tips out there is to run from a crocodile in zigzags since it's hard for the animal to turn around quickly and follow you. This is just a complete myth. Just run in a straight line as fast as you can. Don't bother climbing a tree either. Crocs can climb those too. Don't ever practice your dunking skills on Comet 67P. Its gravity is so weak, your jump would surpass its escape velocity. That's the minimum speed you need to escape the pull of gravity, like rockets blasting off Earth. On this comet, you jump up and go floating off into space. There's a species of giant earthworms that can grow as long as your leg. They live specifically in the Palouse prairie lands of Idaho and Washington. Oh, and these ginormous worms smell like lilies. Dinosaurs had fleas the size of cockroaches. Well, they weren't technically fleas because they couldn't jump high like the modern day ones. But they could get their mouth parts through dino skin. If you swallow gum, it doesn't stay in your stomach for seven years. That's a myth. Sure, your saliva and stomach acid can't break it down, but the muscles of your digestive tract move it along, and it makes its exit in a day or two. Mosquitoes can live perfectly fine on flower nectar instead of your blood, and it's only the females that bite humans, and they do it because they need a protein found in blood to produce eggs. The largest flower in the world also happens to be the stinkiest. With a bloom about three feet across and weighing roughly 15 pounds, the corpse lily smells like rotting meat. Sharks are the only fish that can blink with both eyes, but it's not to clean or hydrate them. They blink to protect their eyes while biting into their lunch. The average cumulus cloud, that's the big poofy kind, weighs just over 1 million pounds. That's the weight of about 100 fully grown elephants floating above your head on a cloudy day. If you shout in space, nobody will hear you. It's because there are no molecules in the vacuum of space for the sound waves to travel through. Dark and light look way more contrasted on the moon. On our planet, the atmosphere diffuses sunlight, so objects remain a little illuminated in the shadows. The moon has a next to nothing super thin atmosphere, so shadows are blacker. But when there's light, it shines on the moon much stronger because of its reflective dust. We went to the moon before wheels were added on suitcases. That second giant leap for our species happened a couple years later. The light stars emit is constant and steady. The Earth's atmosphere interferes and makes it look as if they're twinkling when they're not at all. 
Information moves along nerves at about 200 miles per hour, getting from one place to another in a matter of milliseconds. That's why you jerk your hand back so fast when you accidentally touch that hot pizza pan. Electrical sockets look different around the world, but they all have one thing in common, at least two holes. It's because electricity must flow through a circuit, or a kind of circle. The current flows from your breaker box to the hot hole on the right, passes through the appliance, say your hair dryer or lamp, and then comes back to the neutral left hole. A blue whale's heart is the size of a golf cart and can weigh 400 pounds. Your heart weighs 10 ounces. That makes a blue whale's heart 640 times larger than a human's. But the one with the biggest heart compared to body size amongst all animals, it's your loyal loving dog. People getting their picture taken during Victorian times said prunes instead of cheese. Shaping the mouth this way apparently gave them a nobler look. Plus, it could take 15 to 30 minutes just to take one photo. Imagine holding a smile for that long. Cleopatra lived closer to the release of the first iPhone than to the building of the Great Pyramids. When the first dinosaur fossils were discovered in the 1670s, people had no idea what they were. Their best guess, the bones belonged to an extinct species of giant humans. Fossils also show that 40 million years ago, penguins were the size of a kangaroo. The world's largest waterfall is underwater. This is the Denmark Strait Cataract, where cold, denser water from the Nordic seas flows under warm water from the Erminger Sea. Along the way, it falls 11,500 feet over an underwater ridge. That's more than three times the height of the tallest waterfall on land. Australia is wider than the moon. Check the numbers. The land down under is almost 2,500 miles across. The moon, a little over 2,100. It took Rubik's Cube creator Erno Rubik one month to solve the cube after he created it in the early 70s. The world record today is 3.47 seconds. Lightning is four times hotter than the sun. A single bolt can toast over 100,000 slices of bread. Pineapples have a digestive enzyme in them. So when you eat a pineapple, it eats a little bit of you too. That's why it burns a little in your mouth when you bite into one. No worries though, your stomach will always come out the winner in this match. Disposable chopsticks are connected at the top, so you know they haven't been used before. You're supposed to break that connected top off and lay your used chopsticks on it so they don't touch the table. The main function of eyebrows is to protect your eyes from sweat and dirt. That's why they grow toward your temples, to direct moisture to the sides, instead of straight down. But they also protect your eyes from too much sunlight. Without brows, our species probably would have evolved to have really long, thick eyelashes. An average person will grow 600 miles of hair in a lifetime. That's about the distance from New York City to Dayton, Ohio. Point Nemo in the Pacific Ocean is the most remote place on our planet. It's more than 1,600 miles from any coast. If you traveled there, you'd be much closer to astronauts on the International Space Station than to any human on Earth. The ISS orbits just 250 miles above the surface. Watching paint dry is a profession. You sit in a chair in front of a freshly painted wall and, well, you get it. Your job is to track how the paint texture changes, where it cracks, and give a detailed report based on your thrilling observations. When people used sundials in ancient times, the shadow of the sun went from the left to the right in the northern hemisphere, and vice versa in the southern hemisphere. The first mechanical clocks were invented in the north, so they go with what we now know as clockwise. If it had been in the south, the directions could have been switched today. The body's fastest muscles are in the eye, and the blink of an eye is about one-tenth of a second. You do that 20,000 times a day. Next time someone says, I'll get it done in a jiffy, remember this, scientists say a jiffy is the time light needs to travel one centimeter, about the width of your fingernail, in a vacuum. Human fingertips are so sensitive, they can feel ridges in an object, even when they're just 13 nanometers deep. A nanometer is one millionth of a millimeter, and a millimeter is about the length of a grain of sand. In 1992, 
a cargo ship lost a crate with 28,000 rubber duckies in the North Pacific. These toys still appear on coasts around the world, even over in the Atlantic. Ah, it's a lovely day for a boat ride in the swamp. If not for these mosquitoes, then today would be perfect. But for some reason, the mosquitoes keep getting bigger the further you go into the swamp. They started out as tiny, almost invisible insects, and can now be the size of your thumb. You can hear their buzzing as they whiz past you. You go deeper to investigate why they're so big. Eventually, you see a large cluster of mosquitoes the size of your hand buzzing around. They notice you and start flying toward you. You grab a branch and start swatting them away. You run back to your boat and try to escape, but they follow you and some manage to land on you. You swat them away, but more mosquitoes pop out of nowhere the size of a basketball. You start your boat and speed your way back to the mainland. As you arrive, you see everyone running away in a frenzy, panicking because of the giant mosquitoes. Some of them are as big as a large dog. People are ducking under picnic tables, while some are running back to their cars and driving away. You get off the boat and run toward the closest grocery store, along with dozens of people. The employees lock up the gates, but the large glass panels show the mosquitoes multiplying. They're getting bigger and bigger until you can see one as big as a car zipping by. It's so strong that it landed on an empty car and crushed it. Everyone inside is ducking away out of fear. You try to calm everyone down and not make any noise. The mosquitoes are landing on the glass panel, blocking out the natural light. It's getting dark inside. Someone turns up the volume on the TV to the breaking news. Mosquitoes are flying rampant all across the continent, destroying natural resources and infiltrating cities. People are advised to stay indoors until further notice. The mosquitoes notice that there are people in the store, so they try to get in by force. A car-sized mosquito flies around in the sky, unaware of what's happening below. Everyone hears some noise coming from the back room. The employees realize they didn't lock the doors. A large mosquito enters and knocks down everything. Everyone runs around in a panic while throwing random stuff at it. Some people grab a fire extinguisher and spray it until it flies to the back room. Some employees lock the door and barricade it so that nothing can enter. Everyone waits nervously. The TV broadcasts some live coverage of how giant mosquitoes are flying everywhere. A helicopter is forced to land because the mosquitoes are flying around wildly in the skies. Everyone shudders when they hear the sound of more mosquitoes buzzing around near the back door. Hours pass and more mosquitoes keep coming endlessly. There are no people outside, and much of the urban and landscape design in the park is destroyed or overrun by giant insects. Some people eat whatever is available, while some are sleeping. A piece of breaking news interrupts the live coverage and shows that there will be armored buses ready to pick up people near the picnic site. However, the buses won't drive to hot spots since it'll be too dangerous. The only way to get on them is by being on the highway in two hours. Everyone tries to call their loved ones, but the cell towers have been knocked down, and no one can call anyone. The mosquito that broke in a while ago destroyed the only landline that was present. People are arguing about whether they should stay or go. More insects cover the only clear patches of the sky until the sun disappears. The people split into two parties, those who are leaving to catch the bus and those who want to stay. The employees know a back way that can quickly lead to the highway. The only problem is that it'll take around 20 minutes on foot, and there are no cars to use. The way is tricky. First, they would need to escape through the main entrance and head through the bushy forest behind the dumpsters. Over there, they can enter a building, possibly through the sewers, which will lead to the lake next to the highway. The first party decides to leave. They prepare supplies for the breakout. Every second, more mosquitoes arrive, covering the sky. They gear up with anything they can find to protect themselves. Mosquitoes are attracted to the carbon dioxide that people breathe out, and they know that there's a source coming from the grocery store. Once everyone is ready, they get some makeshift torches and light them up. They add some barbecue fuel to keep the fire going. You're part of the party that is planning to escape. The doors open, and everyone makes a break for it behind the dumpster. Many mosquitoes try to attack you, but the smoke from the fire repels them. 
Every second, more mosquitoes are filling the sky and the environment. Many people end up running back into the store since they couldn't make it past the dumpster to the other building. Eventually, the rest of the people, including yourself, run toward the building. But it's locked and no one can break down the door. Plan B is to break the glass mm. from a window and crawl inside. You grab a rock and smash the closest window. The only problem is that the mosquitoes can follow you inside. So without any options left, you pull through and run to the basement of the building to find the entrance to the sewer. Success! You found it, and everyone descends to the bottom. No mosquitoes in sight, just rats. You're walking knee-high in sewer water with it flowing past you, but it's only a few minutes until you reach the river. Another problem is that the sewer isn't going to the lake, but somewhere deep into the sewer channels. You follow it until you see what looks like an outlet. You make it out and are near a water hole where all the discarded sewage leads next to the swamp. The only problem is that you're not next to the highway anymore, and time is running out. More mosquitoes are swarming the air, but they don't bother buzzing next to you. You notice some cat-sized creatures floating on the water. These are baby mosquitoes, or the larva, and they're coming your way. You and everyone else swim for your lives to the shore. The giant alpha mosquito soars into the air and swoops down to try and grab someone, but it misses. Everyone makes it to the thick, swampy area where no giant mosquitoes can enter. Everyone covers themselves with branches to protect themselves. 15 minutes until the armored bus arrives. Since the mosquitoes can't enter, this will be the best place to hide until then. Darkness falls, and still, no bus! It's been three hours, and nothing! The mosquitoes are still buzzing around, and everyone is getting uncomfortable under the thick bushes. After a while, everyone hears a roaring engine and sees lights flashing on the highway. Everyone gets up and runs to the bus, but you stop them to not draw the mosquitoes' attention. You volunteer to sneak out and stop the bus, and then everyone else can follow without drawing too much attention. You move a couple of branches, step over some tree bark, and crawl to the highway. You try to hold your breath so that you won't make any heavy breathing sounds. You reach the side of the road and wave your arms to stop the bus. It pulls over and the door opens. You signal the rest of the people to follow and they follow your lead. Everyone is inside and safe. Some mosquitoes notice and start pecking on the bus, but the armor is sturdy. The bus drives off looking for other people along the road. And suddenly, a Goliath lands in front of you. The bus stops and sees a mosquito the size of a Boeing 747. It looks straight at you. It gets ready to attack, but the bus speeds under its legs and drives off. The mosquito takes off and tries to catch the bus, but you enter a tunnel to the other side of the mountain. After a few minutes, you reach an open area with no trees or buildings. The bus is speeding while dodging obstacles along the way. Finally, you notice you are near the grocery store where you were held up. The bus opens the door for everyone inside to be taken to a safe zone. You hear from the aid workers that the whole world is being overrun by these giant creatures. As you drive along, you see a hybrid mosquito that has two heads and a scorpion's tail. It's as tall as the Statue of Liberty, and it's ready to attack. Whatever is causing these mosquitoes to grow abnormally is also making them into hybrids and mutants. And you thought it was going to be a good Monday. Flies and other bugs have developed vision, which helps them to react quickly to danger and see in all directions at once. They can easily notice a huge object approaching them and quickly fly away. But when they're flying at a high speed, their vision loses focus, and the image of the world becomes blurred. They can't understand that there's a transparent glass in front of them or a human, so they crash into them. Many beetles are guided by light and temperature. They're flying in the fresh air and suddenly notice the light and feel the heat from the window. A bug heads towards the light and doesn't notice the window. Their vision is not developed enough to distinguish a thin layer of glass in their way. They are also attracted by the smells coming from the house. Most insects don't have sharp vision. A bug flies quickly along the road towards a fast-moving vehicle. The insect notices it too late and simply doesn't have time to react and fly away. The fly's vision is not so bad. When trying to get rid of a fly, you hit it with a newspaper, but the insect easily gets away. Its speed is not so fast for its size, but you're still too slow for it. The tiny fly's brain reacts to what it sees several times faster. 
the fly perceives one second five to six times slower than a human. Imagine a scuba diver running underwater. If you look at them from the surface, they will seem slow to you. That's how a fly sees you from the outside. Throw an ordinary balloon in the air and watch it fall to the ground. For a fly, your hitting hand is not any faster than this balloon. These insects also have unique eyes. They are divided into thousands of receptors and lenses that simultaneously capture light. People use small muscles and turn their eyes to see their surroundings. Flies don't have such muscles. They see in all directions at once. With their 360 degree vision, no matter from which side you attack the fly, it will never be surprised. Flies also have amazing wings allowing them to change direction during the flight. It can stop, turn around, move in a new direction, and dodge any obstacles in a split second. But the most incredible thing about flies is the ability to calculate their flight strategy in advance. You swing a rolled up newspaper at a fly. At this moment, the insect's brain calculates where your hand is going to land. The fly's body immediately takes the right position to perform the maneuver. It knows where you're going to hit before you hit. But you have a small chance to swat a fly. Play ahead of the curve. A fly is sitting on your desk. You need to aim at it, but hit a little further to the place where the fly could possibly move. Anyway, it's difficult to predict its route. Despite your slowness, you're still a big danger to a fly, but for some reason, it's not afraid of you. The fly is moving around your body and doesn't leave you alone. It's because your body is a feast for the fly. It doesn't even need to bite you to get food. Everything is on the surface. Your skin secretes sweat, proteins, carbohydrates, salts, sugar, and other chemicals the fly collects with its feeding tube. Its main obstacle on the way to food is a slow giant, you. And you're not a serious reason to stay hungry. Have you noticed hundreds of moths and night butterflies flying around a lantern or an ordinary lamp? This happens because of their evolution. These insects fly only at night to avoid meeting with predators. For millions of years, they were flying through the night sky guided by the moonlight. But they weren't flying straight to the moon. They had to see the moon at a certain angle. This helped them not to get lost or fall into traps. They know there were fewer dangers where the moon was shining as there would be an open space there. But then, people created electricity. Millions of new moons appeared from windows of our houses to street lamps. A moth flies to the lamp at a certain angle, but unlike the real moon, the lamp is getting closer and closer to the moth. There's more and more light, and the moth is lost in space. It begins to fly in a spiral towards the lamp and gets so close that the light blinds the moth from all sides. It's disoriented and can't understand what's happening. The light that shows the direction to the moth is everywhere, so the insects can't fly away. It just doesn't know where to go. Crane flies are huge insects with long legs. They live near water and moist places with large vegetation. They seem quite scary because they look like huge mosquitoes. But crane flies are some of the most gentle and harmless insects on the planet. Some species feed on nectar from plants. Some crane flies don't have a mouth and don't eat anything at all. They live a short life and use fat reserves they accumulated when they were larvae. These fragile creatures appear after winter. Crane flies play an important role in maintaining the environment. They are food for frogs, fish, birds, spiders, and bigger insects. So don't rush to slam it if you see it. It won't harm you. Most insects can be annoying, and some, like house centipedes, look pretty scary too. These long-bodied creatures with 15 legs can live in your bathroom or even in your bedroom. Most people immediately want to strike it, but you shouldn't do this. A centipede is a useful predator for your home. It catches small insect pests, controls the population of cockroaches, midges, flies, termites, and other beetles. The centipede likes to hang out around food. If you crush it, a lot of small insects will crawl out of your house. It's better to call special services to etch out all unwanted bugs and cockroaches. Once there's no food for it in your house, the centipede will leave it. Centipedes are solitary predators. They are not carriers of diseases. They don't chew on your furniture or clothes. They don't build nests. All they want is to catch prey. The same goes for spiders. They catch bed bugs, mosquitoes, flies, and other small insects. So, spiders and centipedes are the little guardians of your home. Giant tropical centipedes are totally different. These huge creatures are poisonous and can even bite a human. They also have a strong protective shell, which is difficult to destroy. They usually live in tropical forests and jungles, but sometimes they can crawl into houses. 
There's a fast insect hiding in the walls of your rooms or behind the stove in your kitchen. Meet American Cockroach. It's almost impossible to catch it as it can move at the speed of 5 feet per second thanks to its six legs. Each leg has three knees. Their limbs are covered with small hairs that feel any change in vibrations in space. They work as antennae. When you open the kitchen door, they immediately catch a whiff of air and quickly run away. You can't catch them, but house centipedes can. The fastest land animal in the world relative to its size is as large as a sesame seed. It's a mite found in Southern California. It runs 322 lengths of its body in a second. For comparison, the fastest mammal is a cheetah. It can run 16 lengths of its body. The fastest athlete runs six lengths of their body. If you increase the mite to the size of a human, it would be able to move at a speed of 1,300 miles per hour, almost two times faster than the speed of sound. It can change its direction so quickly, you can also call it the most elusive creature on the planet. You won't even see it if the bug runs past. So Barry is running along the shore of a lake as fast as possible. He knows that if he stops, his life will turn into a nightmare in no time. A thousand mosquitoes are about to bite him. But what he doesn't know is that he'll be okay after all. So don't be afraid, Barry, and stop. Mosquitoes are slow. They fly at a little more than one mile per hour. <laughs> and you can't run forever. So after a couple of hours of pointless running, Barry stops. He sweats and emits a smell attractive to insects. One little mosquito flies up to him. It buzzes next to his ear, sits on his sweaty neck, and bites. The insect pierces the skin with a special mouth apparatus called a proboscis. The mosquito starts pumping blood through this needle. Its saliva gets into Barry's body and causes an allergic reaction. More precisely, it's Barry's immune system that starts this reaction. It perceives the mosquito's saliva as an enemy and sends a unique chemical substance to the bite site. The fight between this substance and the invader causes an allergic reaction, redness, swelling, and the worst thing, itching. Barry can scratch himself for several hours or even days. It all depends on how his body will react to the bite. The mosquito fills up with Barry's blood and flies away. It does it not for pleasure, but because it needs to lay eggs. Protein in the blood is necessary for these insects to reproduce. Their eggs can't grow without this substance. Yeah, almost all biting mosquitoes are female. Male mosquitoes prefer plant and flower nectar. Hey, they're guys. So the female mosquito flies away from Barry. She sits down on the shore of the lake where a large mosquito base is located. Here, these insects lay eggs, drink water, and chill in the sun. There are several hundred thousand of them, and they're all hungry. The female mosquito brings with her the smell of berry sweat, which is attractive to the rest of the mosquitoes, too. There are about 3,500 species of these insects on Earth. Some of them love the smell of sugar, perfume, or deodorant. And some enjoy the smell of dirty feet. Mm. Now, your attractiveness to mosquitoes also depends on what you have eaten today. Lots of candies and chocolate? Great! Now, mosquitoes feel a faint sweet smell coming from you. Have you eaten garlic and onions? Mosquitoes probably won't want to deal with you. And not only they, most likely. <laughs> so, the smell of berry sweat is perfect for all mosquitoes on the shore. They go mad, take off, and head for the poor guy. If you walk near the water when the evening comes, if you're sweaty, wearing black clothes, and have O-type blood, then you have all the chances to get bitten by mosquitoes. And Barry meets all the criteria. The first mosquitoes land on Barry's feet. They bite him and start pumping blood. One tiny mosquito can draw a droplet of blood the size of a half a grain of rice. It's nothing at all. But several dozen of these bites? It's bad. Barry fights mosquitoes off with his hands, but the insects keep coming. They can't miss such a delicious dinner. 10, 20, 50, 100 mosquitoes. They cover Barry's legs. The skin swells and turns red. Barry feels a burning sensation. His immune system is working at 100%, trying to reduce the damage and drive the enemies away. But the more actively Barry's body defenses work, the worse he feels. Mosquitoes sit on his hands and on his wet t-shirt stuck to his body. 
Yes, their mouthpiece can pierce a thin layer of fabric. Barry tries to run away. He stumbles over a rock and falls. Some insects finish their feast and fly away to tell their friends about the free food. Mosquitoes from all over the lake come to try Barry. 200 mosquitoes are drinking his blood. 3, 5, 7, 900. Now, 1,000 mosquitoes have bitten him. Together, they have pumped out a small glass of blood. But the worst thing is, they continue biting him. Nothing can stop them now, even though they were supposed to bite him only a thousand times. Well, the only chance to escape is water. Barry, ignoring the itch, gets up and runs to the shore of the lake. Meanwhile, 100,000 mosquitoes have already bitten him. Sorry, Barry, but we have to entertain the audience. Don't worry, your recovery will be fast. He's getting closer and closer to the water. Mosquitoes are flying in front of his face, so he can't see the road. But Barry keeps running, waving his hands. Meanwhile, you know this moment when you're sleeping and one mosquito flies into the room through the window? Just one. But its squeaky sound is so annoying. And now, imagine a million mosquitoes making this noise. It's like a saxophone playing high notes. Sorry if you're a sax player. Well, Barry is slowing down. He's exhausted, and his heart is beating too fast. He no longer feels bites and itches. His body is becoming weak, but he's still moving toward the lake. Mosquitoes have already taken three soda cans of blood from him. And this is serious. Barry is running a fever and has clouded consciousness. His immune system is not coping. Barry can't run anymore. He's struggling to walk. It's getting harder to make every next step. The shore is only a few feet away, but it doesn't matter anymore since he has no energy to move. So he just sits on the grass and accepts the situation. He's lost a large soda bottle of blood, and this is a lot. This is probably the most large-scale attack of mosquitoes on humans. And then, at the very last moment, salvation appears. A frog croaks nearby, and another one. Several dozen jumping animals are approaching the shore. They release their tongues like spears and catch mosquitoes. This gives Barry hope. He makes a last-ditch effort to reach the lake. He jumps in. Yeah! What a relief! Cold, fresh water envelops his whole body and relieves the itching and irritation from the bites. He waits in the water while the frogs dine on the mosquitoes. The remaining insects fly away. Barry crawls out of the lake. He sees frogs catching mosquitoes and realizes that these annoying insects are necessary for our planet. Frogs live thanks to these tiny monsters. And besides frogs, there are many other animals that feed on mosquitoes. Lizards, spiders, bats, birds, turtles, it's a huge list. Mosquitoes are an endless source of food for them. One pair can lay 200 eggs. They grow fast and their lives are short. But if all these insects disappear, an ecological catastrophe may begin. Entire animal species may vanish from the face of the Earth. The frogs that save Barry wouldn't exist. Without frogs, the population of other insects, like flies, would begin to grow. They would reproduce uncontrollably. And then, like falling dominoes, other problems will follow. So, Barry, don't be angry at mosquitoes. It's just nature. You better deal with your itchy problem. His whole body is red, covered with little bumps. He starts scratching himself, but this doesn't help. He only makes it worse. As long as mosquito saliva remains in his body and the immune system fights it, Barry will feel this itch. Fortunately, there are many oils and ointments to alleviate these effects. But the best way to get rid of the problem is to ignore it. Barry just needs to distract himself with something. Then the urge to scratch will disappear. Barry has survived so many mosquito bites without harmful consequences. But some people have problems dealing with just one. It depends on whether a person has allergies. Some have a small itchy bump, and others have severe inflammation. As for Barry, wasn't he swell? I mean, didn't he swell? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. The best way to protect yourself is to use insect spray. Now, Barry sprays himself with this substance before every run and feels safe. But let's have a look at another situation. What if Barry gets attacked by huge dogs? Hey, just kidding. Relax, Barry. 
Imagine this, when you're wandering around London, you're actually walking over hundreds of miles of tunnels, passageways, and abandoned subway stations. Yeah, there's a whole world down there, underground. What's actually hidden there? Let's try to find out. We didn't even know about this giant network of underground tunnels and passages until recently. People could only guess that there was something underground. It wasn't until 1980 that journalist Duncan Campbell managed to sneak into this underground world. He was able to find a small portal there. Campbell only had a bicycle, a flashlight, and a camera. Together with his friends, he later called the Moles, he went to explore the mysterious undercity of London. And what they saw was astonishing. A giant, complex system. Ghost subway stations, post channels, secret tunnels, and much more. A city under a city. What's more interesting, no one truly knows what really is there. The history of this underground network is so great that nobody actually has its full map. But today, we're going to take a look at some places we know about. The first type is secret passageways. This includes all shelters and tunnels between famous buildings. For example, the passages leading from Buckingham and Westminster palaces. There are also more than 30 bunkers and tunnels scattered throughout the city. Each of these bunkers can accommodate hundreds of people. Many of these passages were created in the 20th century or even earlier. There are also those that date back to the times of the Industrial Revolution. They're all very old and honestly look truly creepy. The second type is postal passages. We know that the underground network is full of them. Unfortunately, we aren't sure about their exact locations. The most famous postal passage is the Postmaster General's secret tunnel. It's right in the heart of London. This passage was created in the middle of the 20th century to transport particularly important messages. This large tunnel stretches all the way to the working East End, breaking up into a network of small passages. And finally, the subway and its abandoned stations. Did you know that the first subway in the world appeared in London? The city's subway system is quite large right now, but there were actually even more stations before. Deep beneath the feet of London's residents lies a network of abandoned tube stations. Almost all of them have remained untouched since the last passenger left their platforms decades ago. There are more than 40 abandoned stations in the city. Let's talk about the most interesting and mysterious ones. London's Tube. This is a river tunnel which served as a test version for the engineers who built the first subway. It's located near the Tower of London. Once it connected the northern and southern parts of the river. Now, these are just the remnants of the long-lost system. Only this small, round building recalls the times when people used it to get across the river. In the Victorian era, the population of London experienced a big boom. Of course, the authorities needed to do something about this. It took a few decades to fill the city with tons of bridges, different means of transport, and trains. And then, engineer Peter Barlow came up with the idea of creating a whole network of tunnels that would transport people under the city. At first, people were terrified. So much money for such a crazy idea. But we already know the end of this story. The construction of the tunnel was completed in less than a year. And in February 1870, it carried its first passengers. After a lot of criticism, fear, and improvements, in the end, the first full-fledged subway station was created. It closed around 150 years ago. The fate of the station was sealed when they built Tower Bridge right next to it, which sounds better, a walk in the fresh air over the bridge, or a paid trip through a dark, cramped tunnel. Of course, the Tower Subway had to be closed down. Down Street Station was closed just 25 years after its opening. First of all, there were other, more convenient stations nearby. And secondly, the locals were rich and could afford more expensive means of transport. However, Down Street wasn't out of service for long. It came in handy again in 1939. The platform was bricked up, and the station was secretly transformed into the headquarters of the Executive Committee of the Railway. Since many railroad tracks were damaged, this committee organized all underground movements. The committee hosted Winston Churchill himself, and a little later, they even built the rooms there for the cabinet ministers. Churchill affectionately called this place a barn, but since then, Downstreet hasn't been used anymore. 
It's still empty to this very day, and the station has, to put it mildly, a creepy look. Aldwych. This station has a ridiculous backstory. Despite the fact that it was basically useless, it somehow lasted for about 80 years, and people almost never went there because there were more convenient alternatives nearby. But it's actually a good thing that they didn't close it for so long. Thanks to this, Aldwych Station saved the most valuable treasures of England. Here, people once hid the most precious works of art and relics. For example, the world-famous Elgin Marbles. In the 60s, the station started working only during rush hours on weekdays, and in 1994, it was mercifully spared from suffering, simply because they didn't want to spend extra money to replace the elevators here. Now, this station is often used for filming many famous British TV series. You can also check it out during the tour of Hidden London. Clapham South Yes, technically it's not an abandoned station, but few people know that once it served as living quarters for new arrivals to Britain. There were beds and wash basins for them. It was quite noisy as people heard passing trains all the time, so it couldn't be called the most comfortable accommodation. Those who stayed there paid 6 shillings 6 pence a day, which is equivalent to 33 pence today. They still haven't taken down the signs for medical aid points and an improvised canteen. You can still see them during the tour to this station. Brompton Road The Piccadilly line is downright full of abandoned tube stations. This station suffered the same fate as Down Street. It was simply too close to its neighbors and was doomed to be deserted from the very beginning. In 1926, the authorities closed Brompton Road for five months, and less than 10 years after this, they closed it completely. In the middle of the 20th century, this station started to be used again, just like Down Street. During times of emergency, this place could serve as an underground bunker with the command post on the upper floors and the elevators turning into operating rooms. This station is a relic. These tunnels have witnessed important events in British history. York Road The Piccadilly Line again. What a lucky line! York Road closed in 1932 on the same day that the section of the line from Finsbury Park to Arnos Grove opened. The number of passengers plummeted, and for about a couple of years, there was a debate about whether to leave the station open. As a result, it was decided to close it. It's a pity because the station was truly beautiful. Just look at these wonderful oxblood tiles. Even now, York Road has a rather pleasant appearance. But there's still a chance that one day, we'll see the rebirth of York Road. This city area is currently under reconstruction. If more people settled there, the station could be reopened again. What a great world of underground London. Who could have known that they have a whole web of structures below that hold so much history? It's a pity that the passages are closed. It would be very interesting to see all of this, but also pretty scary.